Every day's an adventure when you're a penny stock trader. I'm John Zadar. I'm the host of On Top and Hot, and this is Monday, April 10th. Now, every day we go through the same thing here in the first three or four minutes because I got to buy time <laughs> to let that news scroll by. There is some important information in there, folks. Right now, I've got eight days worth of news in there, all OTC penny stocks. And I've read all that news, so I know what I'm talking about. It's juicy. You've got mergers, acquisitions, new technology, uplistings, all sorts of news that could get a stock moving. So if you haven't had time to go through the news like I do, and there's a lot of junk news out there, there you go. That is cliff notes for you. In the meantime, I'm going to babble here a bit about what we do on this show. We look at OTC and penny stocks, as if you didn't know. We're looking for stocks that have potential. And how do I determine what stock has potential? Not through the news. I know that's how most people do it. I do it by looking at the charts first. I don't even know what charts I'm looking at. I just bring up a scan and I just start going through every single chart looking for something that looks hot, like it's ready for a breakout or it's got a lot of volume. Then I go looking for a catalyst, go through the filings, go through the news press, go back a month or so, see if they announce something then that's going to happen at the end of the month, right? Get some good positioning. So this is how I'm determining what stocks have heat. And when I'm looking for those catalysts, I'm doing it right here, the otcmarkets.com website. And that means for all the stocks, even the major exchange ones. Yeah, this is set up for the OTC markets and it's pretty good for that. It's updated every single day by FINRA and the SEC. So all that important information we're constantly looking for, it's here. Don't go searching for it on Google. First time you find it, it's going to be right. But they also bring in a lot of information about the major exchanges. So since I'm spending so much time over here anyways, I might as well look at the penny stocks on the major exchanges because those penny stocks are just any stock under five bucks and they are on the major exchanges as well as the OTC. And you can get most of that information right here. So quit wasting your time Google searching. Start here. All right, let's see how our OTC market finished today. Looking pretty bleak there. All the numbers are low. We'll go ahead and refresh this and get ourselves a bump. Oh no, really? Oh my God, folks. I just felt a big old cold. Oh, it just fell to my gut. Oh, down to my feet. Holy cow, folks, this hit me hard. We're under 1 billion on our dollar volume. I have never seen this. I have never seen this. We are trying to get to 2 billion. We were getting close, but we just haven't hit it in a very long time. And that's when the market starts to move. We have been falling down towards 1 billion, which has been scary. Now we're under it. Not just barely, we're down to 900 million. Whew. I don't know what's going to happen here, folks. This is not any place I thought we were going to be. Our share volume is under 5 billion. We need to be at 10. And our trades, we're still under 250,000, just barely. But my concern, which I normally don't concern myself with much, is that dollar volume. The reason I say I don't concern myself with it much, you really don't see the charts moving hard if this is a big number. But the bottom line is, the more money that's in the market, the more money we can take out of the market. And they're taking more and more out of the market before we even get to play our game. So things are looking bleak right now. All right, I've got some interesting stocks to share with you today. As I said, I found these by looking at the charts first. They've all got nice chart setups and they've all got some sort of catalyst. So let me show you what I got. First stock we're gonna take a look at comes from the OTC market. This is Cicerex Inc ticker SYSX. Now, I really don't have a whole lot to share with you about this company. There are no new news presses or filings to really consider. But what she has is exactly what we need. She's got a really hot chart. It is already in the midst of the breakout and the volume has come in. Why? I think it's because everybody's anticipating the filings. The financials are overdue right now. And when you look at their revenues, they have been growing steadily. So we're expecting a bigger financial. So SYSX, she finished today at a great buy price, 001. Got to tell you, my favorite price to buy a stock. Buy at 001, soon as it hits 002, you've made 100%. And 
I gotta tell you, going from 001 to 002, it's a move I can't even show you. It is so small on the chart. And when it hits three, you've tripled your money. Four, quadrupled. By the time you hit a penny, you've got a thousand percent gains. So yeah, I love buying on the 001. She broke even today. We've got no high or low to talk about. She is on the pink tier, she's current, and she's got both those green ticks we always like to see, verified profile and a transfer agent. So what does this company do? Well, the company's got two subsidiaries, TTM Digital Assets and Technologies and Cicerex Government Services. TTM is focused on mining Ethereum and providing blockchain-related products. SGS provides information technology products, solutions, and services to federal, state, and local government, including system integrators, and is working to integrate blockchain technologies into the services it provides. So what was the relative volume around the company today? For breaking even, that's a ton of volume, my God. She had almost 22 million shares when she's doing normally just over 13 million. So she had a big increase today. You just can't see it up here, can we? Looking at that share structure for the company. Oh, no, I did not look this one up. Whenever I find a share count that's in the billions, I really don't expect to find anything I'm gonna be impressed with, like millions. I think it's gonna be in the billions. So they tell us here that back in 2022 of May, the float was about a half a billion. Maybe, I don't know. Uh, they say a number here of 1.8 billion. I don't know. All I know is it's under 2.4 billion and I'm pretty sure it's over 1 billion. Looking at the financials for the company. All right. Looking at 2021, they did $12.5 million worth of revenue. Now we know it's millions because we've got to put those three zeros behind any of the numbers on these charts. Now let's jump over to the quarterly. See, 2022, we've only got three here. We're waiting for that last one. So we've got six, nine and a half, 12 and a half, 13. So we got $13 million in three quarters when they did just over 12 million last year in 2021. So we're expecting not only for this quarter to be bigger, but for the annual to be bigger. So that should get people excited. That's the whole catalyst right there. Looking at her disclosures. Uh, we've got one 8K here that just came out a couple days ago. This has to do with them selling some preferred shares, which is outside our realm. And then you've got their overdue annual report. A 10K is an annual report and an NT, you can think of that as saying not. We're not filing our 10K on time. And when they file this filing, it gives them a 15 day grace period. So they filed this on the 31st. They've got until the 14th before they have any more situations. So we are expecting this in the next four days. And as I said, when it comes to the news, we don't have anything here since November. That was our last piece of news and this was a business update. And basically, it's talking about how the share has been moving around. They talk about it being dropped from the QB down to the pink. But then down here, they tell us that they have plans to uplist to the New York Stock Exchange. Okay, one thing you want to consider is if they're serious about that move to the New York Stock Exchange, you have to be a minimum of $4 to get on the New York Stock Exchange. It's only $3 for the NASDAQ, which means they would have to do a reverse split to get that price up to $4, and it would be huge. But they could do it with all the shares they've got, but it would be a gigantic reverse split. But they don't give us any time span or dates here. It's just something they throw out there like most companies do so you think everybody's moving forward all right let's go take a look at that pretty chart I was telling you about Mwah! what a sweet chart right oh let me zoom in on that it'll look better this is ticker SYSX we're gonna be doing our charting on all these stocks on thinkorswim this is my free trading platform I got it from TD Ameritrade so can you so we're going to look at Cicerex Inc. This is a six month, four hour view. We got a high bubble back here in August of 3.2 cents and then a humongous fall all the way down to triple zero five. This is at the end of November. Now it looks like she's pretty flat here, but there is some roll going on in there. As you can see, she got up over 200, fell down underneath it. But right now, 
she has pushed up off of this low she has been riding up for about eight days got up over that 200 has had a pullback but not a drop back she is not underneath the 200 she is holding up there our ppo very much like our MACD, you read them the same, you want that blue line on top of the pink. We had that crossover yesterday, it is pushing up. Our MACD had a crossover about a week ago, it just got over the signal line and it is accumulating a lot of big green bars right now. And our RSI is just under 70 at 68. Looking at that 20 day, one hour view, so she was deep under her 200 here, even underneath her 50, hit that low, Went sideways for a while. Once she got up over that 50-day SMA solid, she took off for the last three days she has been running. She started her run here from triple zero six and got to double zero twelve. That's a hundred percent run right there. Crossed that 200, did not look back. Pulled back off of that high of double zero one two and is at double zero one. She is sitting firmly planted on that nine-day SMA up there. Our oscillators, Things have cooled off a little bit, but everything still looks solid and strong. Five day, five minute. All right, she was under the 200 day SMA here with her low, and it took three days of just consolidating. People accumulating shares here and there for three days, and then she took off. And she got a nice ride here. It was pretty steady. She was riding on her nine day SMA, bouncing down to her 50, it looks like. Yep. Her 50-day SMA is the one she fully respects. She likes to ride on the 9-day SMA. Right now, she's just underneath the 50-day SMA, and the technical say she is pulling back right now. Now, what we're looking for is that financial. We need that to come out, and it's going to be the quarterly and the annual. And if they come out with any nice numbers, this thing's going to run. It is in a perfect place right now. It's already above the 200 on all time slots. It's warm, the volume is sitting there. It just needs a push. SYSX, the next four days, we could see a pop out of this if those financials come out on time. We're now gonna take a look at a penny stock on the New York Stock Exchange. This is Butterfly Network, ticker BFLY, BFLY. Now this one's pretty straightforward as well. She's got a sweet chart. It's a lot like the last one. The price is coming up underneath that 200 and breaking out right now. And there's lots of volume coming into the picture. So when I came over here looking for a catalyst, I was a little disappointed when there were no filings and no press releases to consider. But she does have a catalyst. Looking around, I discovered that here recently, last week, you have this very well-known big investor that just made two large purchases into this company. So you got a lot of people getting their eyeballs on this company, and I think we should too. So B-Fly, she finished the day at $2.47 with almost 8.5% gains. So what does Butterfly Network do? Well, they work in the health sector creating devices. Butterfly created the world's first handheld, single probe, whole body ultrasound system using semiconductor technology, the Butterfly IQ Plus. Through its proprietary ultrasound on-chip technology, Butterfly is paving the way for earlier detection and remote management of health conditions around the world, including parts of Africa, Asia, Australia, Europe, North America, and South America. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Considering she didn't have any direct catalysts, not bad. We've got about 80% increase in her share volume, jumping from 3.5 million to 6.5 million. Share structure for BFly, not a bad outstanding share count. We got 177 million. We got no information here and you're not gonna get it from the financial on a major exchange. So we got no choice but to go over to Google. Now we got a few numbers over here, 149, 149, 156, 145, 145, 145. So why don't we just round this up to 150 million roughly, between 145 and 150. Financials for Butterfly, looking good, steadily growing every single year. From 2019 to 2022, they started at 27 million and went all the way to 73 million. Now this is all of 2022, so looking at the quarterly, we got no new information. They've just broke those annuals down into quarterly. But we do have a quarterly that's due any time now, but that's not our catalyst, that's just a bonus. Looking at our disclosures, I did go through these, there's nothing really gonna 
make the chart move, but this catalyst that I'm talking about is. So when I jumped over to the news, I was expecting to see something here. Well, the only way I found it was Seeking Alpha. Had a little bit of information and surprisingly, they let me read it. I went to this site so often that they've blocked me now and they want me to pay a yearly fee if I want to go there. And I just don't want to because Bloomberg wants me to pay. Wall Street Journal wants me to pay because I've been to all these sites too many times. They just say I have to pay if I want to use their information. But Seeking Alpha allowed me to see this, and this is what they tell us. Kathy Woods, the CEO of ARK Investment, buys another 1.13 million shares of Butterfly. You see, on April 4th, she bought 2.6 million shares of this company. April 4th, just about a week ago. And the very next day, April 5th, she came back and bought another 1.13 million shares. Back to back, so now she's got what? 3.8 million shares of this company's stock just in the last couple of days. What does Kathy know that we don't know, right? That's the whole point. Jump on their shirt tails, follow the money. And since the chart is warm, now would be a good time to look at it. So let's go look at it. You can see that one a little bit easier, can't you? This is B-Fly Butterfly Networks. And of course, we're on a six month, four hour view. As usual, it is August. We have our high here, $8.72. She barreled down through that 200, fell all the way down to a 52 week low about six days ago of $1.63. Now, as you can see, there is not a lot of volume here to be spoke of not even on their financials, which looks like it was a good day. You had a jump there, but where's the volume? But when you look here, when Kathy came into the picture, we got lots of volume. Now this is our 52 week low on the 31st. It was already bouncing before Kathy came into the picture. I always say that when you find a company that has value that hits a 52 week low, you're normally gonna see a strong bounce off of it because for practical purposes, it's just a for sale sign. It's a bargain. The company's got value and it's this low. Now's the time to buy. And that's what happened here. You got a nice bounce here from $1.63 up to $1.91 when she hit her head on the 50 day SMA. Came back down to her nine day, floated up to that 50 and then came Kathy Wood's purchase. So I'm presuming and burst that thing all the way up to the 200 day SMA. She came back down, but she has jumped right back up on top of it. And that's where she's sitting right now. Our oscillators are looking good. Our PPO is climbing. MACD is climbing. RSI is up at 64. So everything looks tight on the four hour. 20 day, one hour view. Under the 200 all this time, fell down to that low bubble, had that huge jump up to the 200 on this chart, went sideways, then got that catapult from Kathy. Again, I'm presuming, I don't know, but this is the third right here. Pushed up to that 260 and has rolled around. She has fallen back after market hours a little bit, but she's sitting firmly on top of that nine day SMA. Our technicals, they don't show the pullback. I mean, the PPO and the MACD are still strong. There's a wee bit of leveling out, but they're still up there. And our RSI is still hot at 65. Looking at that five day, five minute chart. Huge jump here, my goodness. Going from $1.86 up to $2.50. She rolled down under that 200 here, had a nice jump here, pushed herself way up. She's landed on the 200, has bounced, and looking at our oscillators down here, it looks like she wants to continue coming down a wee bit more. Though it's tough to tell, our MACD looks like it's trying to recover, so she could bounce off of this. I am at a loss to know exactly where this is going to go. Kathy Woods is well known. She just got herself 3.8 million shares of this company last week. And considering I could not find a catalyst, not in the filings, not in the news press. Now, maybe I didn't go far enough back or maybe there's something ahead that I'm not aware of. But I'll tell you what. Kathy knows what she's doing. She didn't buy all those shares because she didn't know. So what we're doing is following the money. We're following Kathy. Now, is this going to continue to grow? I really don't know. Is she going to buy more? Are others going to come on board? Is there a news press about ready to come out? We're going to have to keep our eyes on this. BFLY, she's had a lot of volume come in. It's worth watching. 
And the last stock we're looking at comes from the OTC market. And I'll bet you're familiar with this company. This is DVLP, Golden Developing Solutions. There's been a lot of attention being paid to this company here recently. She's been doing a lot. She had a nice run back in February, but it's nothing compared to the run she had in October and November when the price was over the 200-day SMA. Now, to be completely honest, I don't have anything new to share with you. There are no new filings. There is no new news. So why are we looking at this company now? Because of the chart. We look at charts first, then I go looking for a catalyst. Now true, I did not find a catalyst, but this chart I cannot pass up. We had that run back in February. Well, she was way under the 200 and she had a nice run, but nothing compared to the run she was having in October and November when she was over the 200. Well, right now she has brought that price right up to the 200 and she is ready for a breakout. So any catalyst that surfaces or develops with DVLP is probably going to have that chart move and hard. So DVLP, she finished the day at 004 with just over 5.5% gains. She's on the pink tier, she's current, and she's got those green ticks we're always talking about. So she looks good. So Golden Developing Solutions, they are in the health sector. They're kind of like a holdings company. They tell us here that the company is focused on acquisitions of synergistic companies, and that's exactly what they do. They bought four companies last year, four acquisitions, all the same sort of companies, pharmaceutical companies that mail their products. Well, the company came out with a news press not too long ago that declared they have revenues coming out in the next financial which is a big deal considering they have no money on the books at all up to now. Now, as I said, there's no new news here, but we are waiting for that financial and the chart is now set up. And any new catalyst comes out, boom. So what was the relative volume around this company today? Nice increase, jumping from 11.6 million to just under 20 million. Share structure for DVLP, nope. <laughs> No, I was looking up at the top wondering why there wasn't a Google page up there for my float because I don't look up floats that are over a billion shares. I'm presuming it's over a billion. It got 1.4 billion outstanding. They say it was about a half a billion eh, six months ago, maybe. And they got other numbers that say 1.3 billion. So I'm pretty confident that our float is too big, over a billion shares. Financials for DVLP. We got nothing on the annual. We got nothing on the quarterly. There is nothing here at all. So why are we looking at it? Because they're gonna have money coming in. Matter of fact, let me just jump right on over here. This is the piece of news. This is the big piece of news we're waiting on. This came out February 7th. Golden Developing Solutions is a holding company in the health and wellness marketplace with a focus on acquiring companies pharmacies, delivering pharmaceuticals and specialty medicines with rapid delivery services and adequate medical support in the United States. The company has achieved unaudited December 2022 sales of $5.6 million, with the largest customers still to be onboarded. So we've just jumped from zero income to $5.6 million. It also expects significant increase in revenues after four previously announced acquisitions are fully transitioned. During this final process of transitioning and onboarding customers, we expect a brief dip in Q1 sales, which has just ended, followed by a robust rebound and acceleration. After completed, the company will again begin to acquire more acquisitions in the specialty pharmacy market. We are holding off closing several targeted additional acquisitions until we complete the state, federal, vendor, and other rules, regulations, and transitions of the four we have already acquired. One of the hurdles was that the audit work on the acquisition was behind schedule due to proprietary software reporting systems of third parties. And that's where we're at right now. Their filing is a not 10k they're late they bought themselves 15 days they filed theirs on the 31st so they've got to the 14th or 15th of this month too so we're expecting that any day now um the four recent specialty pharmacy acquisitions in 2022 have capacitated the company's service offerings to the state of michigan and florida with a consolidated revenue of 100 million dollars 
Now, that sounds to me like when you bring all four companies together, bring all their revenues together, it adds up to $100 million. So we're going from zero to 5.6 to 100 million. Now I did go through some of their filings and they've got two of the companies that they have finished auditing. They've got to do the other two companies right now. And that's what's been holding up the financials. But it sounds like there's a lot of money that's going to be shown to us, which means we're going to have a catalyst and this chart setup is not going to be wasted. Let me show you what it looks like. So there's your chart for DVLP, Golden Developing Solutions. And of course, it is a six month, four hour chart we're looking at. Our high, this one came in October, about a penny and a half. Then we hit a low in December of 002. Here's our run in February. It was a nice run. She stopped because she hit her head on the 200. If you take away the ceiling, what happens? Sky's the limit. You get runs like this in October and November. Then she went sideways for a long time. And right now she is getting ready to try to break out, but she needs a push. She needs a catalyst. And that financial would be a real good one. The uh, volume has been solid all of this time. We don't have a problem with volume. Our oscillators, pretty strong right now. Our PPO and MACD are both pushing up and climbing. RSI is pushed from 48 up to 58. Things are looking good on the four hour chart. Looking at our 20 day, one hour view. So we go from a high of 005 to a low of 003 from one extreme to the other. And then you kind of find yourself a middle here and level out. She has gotten on top of her 200, top of her 50, top of the 20, and it looks like she's on top of her nine. She's actually in a very good position right now on top of everything. And our oscillators are all looking good. We got a crossover on our MACD pushing up. PPO is still climbing and our RSI is still at that 58. Looking at that five day, five minute. All right, we've got some bounces on top of our 200 day SMA here. She's going from roughly 0035 up to four. It's not a big bounce at all. She's just kind of holding steady here. What we need is that catalyst, any catalyst. The financials would be great. A news press would be great. Another acquisition, anything like that, because a lot of people are watching this. Volume is here every single day. There's always people ready. So any catalyst comes, folks, I honestly believe that DVLP is gonna be a profit maker for us. So put it on your list along with the other two. Like a lot of the stocks we've been looking at here recently, two of them, the catalyst is the financials. DVLP and SYSX, S-Y-S-X. I think they're going to be big. I think we can make some money on these. Then you got B-Fly. This is the one where Kathy Woods bought 3.8 million shares of the company. And we don't even know why. Why did she buy all those shares back to back two days in a row? Something's going on. Put these stocks on your watch list, folks. It can't hurt to watch them, and it could possibly put some money in your pocket. Due diligence. The more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.